reduce training and staffing costs, the support team is embarking on a new pilot project that uses cognitive computing technology, a service advisor, to support their customer service reps. In today's recording, we will see how a product technical support analyst uses IBM Stored IQ to identify and create sets of content to train the service advisor system. We will then see the customer service rep use the service advisor to respond to and close customer calls. Carly, the technical support analyst, will use filters in order to identify and refine a set of content that is required by the service advisor system. Preston, one of the customer service representatives, then uses the service advisor to resolve questions and issues for his customers. Having indexed the data, Carly is reviewing the all data overview information. The data map presented gives her a feel for the amount of data that falls into each category based on the relative size of the boxes presented. Carly starts the process by applying a text filter for the product that was selected for the pilot program. This will enable her to collect all available content for that product. Carly knows she will be working with this info set repeatedly, so she creates a new info set that contains all materials associated with this product. Carly's initial filter has significantly decreased the number of objects to work with. However, she will still need to refine the info set in order to act on the data required for the pilot. Carly selects the auto classify filter and selects multiple categories of documents that will be required by support, including assembly, instructions, etc. The auto classify results are based on a classification engine that better categorizes files, in this case with a confidence level of 80%. Carly creates a new info set for the resulting product documentation. This info set will be of great value in the new Service Advisor system. Before proceeding, Carly reviews the new info set and sees that the majority of the information is contained in word processing documents. Having collected product documentation, Carly returns to her original product info set to begin identifying additional content that will be valued by product support. In today's rapidly changing environment, monitoring social media is key to high customer satisfaction. As such, Carly reviews the library of filters and selects the filter that will identify customer sentiment from these sources. Carly previews the results of the customer sentiment filter and identifies the need to further refine this content by targeting key support information. Once again, Carly applies a text filter. In this case, she uses the identifier how to slash how do used within 15 words of the product name. Carly creates this product specific customer sentiment info set for use in the pilot. Carly does a quick visual review of this info set and sees that it's made up of mostly email, blogs, and repository comments. Having identified both product documentation and targeted product customer sentiment, Carly wants to ensure key support knowledge, such as hints and tips, are made available to the service advisor. Carly once again returns to the product info set. Carly uses the owner filter to target repositories owned by the customer support team. She then creates a new info set for this collection of content. She quickly reviews the visual for the info set. Carly then views the work she has completed to ensure that she collected all of the relevant material that will be needed by the service advisor system. Having just created multiple info sets, Carly uses the union operation to combine the product documentation, customer sentiment, and hints and tips info sets into one single info set. Carly creates the new customer service info set that will feed the service advisor technology being piloted. Carly reviews the results of the combined info set. She creates a project report for this info set, ensuring that the materials can be assessed during and upon completion of the pilot program. To confirm consolidated content and to report the status of the effort, Carly provides this project report to the customer support and product management teams. Carly now copies this information to a targeted repository to be used by the service advisor system during the pilot. She chooses to have the actions take effect immediately to begin the process of training the service advisor system. Carly reviews the details of the execution log to confirm that the action was completed and the content was made available without exceptions. Having seen how Carly built the collection of information required by the service advisor system, we'll move to the customer services representative to see the work in action. 
Preston, the customer service rep, has received a call from one of his customers who has questions about replacing the product battery. Using the service advisor, Preston determines that replacing the battery is not permitted and at this point the unit should be recycled. He selects the surrounding information icon to review any additional information. Preston sees that the information about the battery is clearly documented in the warning information and communicates this to his customer. Preston then moves to the next call, which relates to using multiple powered products together. He inputs the scenario into the service advisor and reviews the resulting information and the low confidence rating for the answer. He quickly reviews the additional considerations and notes the potential safety concerns. He informs the customer and closes the call. Today we've seen how a product technical support analyst is able to understand, analyze, and manage her data in order to provide targeted knowledge to a newly installed service advisor system. We then watched how that system supported a customer service representative through his daily tasks. For more information, please contact IBM. Thank you.